All right, so we've covered Illustrator and Photoshop, which are both asset creation programs. Now we're going to move on to InDesign, which is strictly a layout program, meaning that you put finished things in it. Okay, um, what I mean by that is you don't really necessarily use InDesign to create your text or your images. You use it to lay out already prepared text and images. So we're actually going to do just a quick, easy example of a pumpkin pie recipe, since that's probably near and dear to our hearts this time of year. And I've got a Word file of the recipe, and then I have two images that are TIFFs that I'm going to bring into InDesign. So I've got just a pumpkin and then my pumpkin pie. So I have all my things prepared already in a folder called Practice. And mine's on the desktop right here, but this folder is also available within my art faculty drive under InDesign called Practice. So to get started in InDesign, I'm going to go to that application. It's a little ID on the dock. And I'm going to go File, New. Now you've got a couple of options when you go File, New. There's Document, Document from Template, Book, and Library. Uh, we're strictly just going to stick with document in this class because that's the most common one. So I'm just going to choose document. And then you get some pretty basic settings. Okay, a lot of these should look familiar from the other Adobe programs uh, with a few distinct exceptions. Uh, one thing is that you can have more than one page. Okay, that's a really big issue with InDesign. A lot of people are torn between using Illustrator and InDesign to lay out something like a poster or flyer. I tend to use Illustrator because I like the text control, but if you do anything beyond one page, you have to use InDesign. Okay, so if you ever do a book or a newsletter or some of those things we'll demo in class, you can actually determine how many pages right out of the gate. You could also choose your paper size, so I'm just going to stick with letter. Uh, I could choose how many columns, we'll talk about that at a later time. I also could set my margins and bleed and slug. Bleed and slug, you can actually ignore altogether. I can even get rid of it by clicking on fewer options. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Um, and margins is just the space around the page. Okay, we need to have some kind of cushion because you all know that printers can't print all the way to the edge. That's actually what the bleed is. Um, so I'm just going to keep these default settings essentially for right now. I'm going to click OK. And I get something that looks very much like Illustrator. I have this large document area. If I zoom out with Command minus, you can see I have a reasonably sized artboard. And then I have my tool. So I have black arrow tool and white arrow tool, which you should be familiar with now by Illustrator. I've got the pen tool, same thing there, text tool, pencil tool, shape tools. Honestly, all the tools are really much the same. The thing that you're going to find different in InDesign is not only its intention of being a layout program, uh, but also that you can uh, link text boxes together across multiple pages, which you can't do in Photoshop and Illustrator. We'll demo that later as well. Just like in a magazine where it's like this story continued on page 15, that spillover text is something you do in InDesign. So uh, all my tools are pretty basic. There is one distinct difference though, in that in InDesign, all of your assets, whether they're text or images, are placed in a frame and not like a pretty picture frame. It really just means like a bounding box. So if I wanted to add text to this document, I've got a couple of ways I can do it. I could just grab my text tool and I could click and release at the top of the page. And that's how we did it in InDesign, just to type. But you notice that no cursor is blinking there. I need to actually establish a frame by clicking and dragging. So it's simple, but that little blue rectangle is the frame and that's going to hold this particular piece of text. I'm just going to type in pumpkin pie. Now, it looks like just a little gray line right now. That's what InDesign calls greeked out text when you can't see it because it's too small. So I can simply select that text. And right up in my option bar at the top, I have some pretty familiar looking settings. I could choose a different font. I could choose a different size. And now you can see it. Um, I also have alignment that I can do all up in here. I've got indentation. I can also access these outside of the options bar just by going to my character or paragraph palette, which look identical to Photoshop and Illustrator. I can also get to those by going window and then type in tables character. Okay, so in Photoshop it's just window type. In Illustrator it's window type 
and here it's type and tables for whatever reason, but you can get to your character palette that way. So adding text, relatively easy, no different than anything else. Uh, however, I want to import some text. Okay, I want to bring in text from that Word document because you typically wouldn't type in InDesign. You would type it in a simpler program like Word where it's easy to extract it. Now to bring in text, you just have to go File, Place, which is the same command that we use for bringing uh, anything into an Adobe program. And I'm going to navigate to my desktop where I have that Practice folder, and I'm going to choose that Word document. So you can import Word documents or text documents. Either one is fine. And let me do that again because I had this text box selected. <laughs> That's okay. I meant to do that. Yeah. If I zoom in, you could see that it brought in the text right next to that cursor because I had my cursor active there. Um, I just undid it, but now you could see my cursor is loaded. It looks like it has a little icon next to it and then a little snippet of the text. So there's two ways I can go about placing text. I can either go File Place with no frame selected and then click and drag to create a frame that it will populate. Or the way you probably should do it, I'm going to zoom out here, is I'm going to use my text tool to draw a new frame. And then with my cursor in that frame, I'm going to go File Place, navigate to that Word document, and then it will just fill that frame. Okay, so in InDesign you can either just type in or you can import by going File Place. You could of course also copy and paste. If I went to the Word document, I could grab something and go in Command C. I can go back into InDesign, create a text box, and go Command V. So there's several ways to get text from something else into InDesign. Whatever you choose is up to you. Now a couple of things about InDesign that are unique. I had made a nice big text frame here. If I had made it too small, I would be able to tell because of two visual cues. One, I know that the content is longer than this, so I could tell some of it's getting cut off. And two, InDesign's telling me because it has this little red plus sign. That little red plus sign means that there's more content that the frame can show. So your options are either to make your content smaller or to make your frame bigger. And uh, those are two totally different things, but if I just expand my text box, you can see that that red plus sign goes away and all the content fits there. So InDesign tells you when something doesn't fit, and it's just important to watch for that little red plus sign. We'll address how to make it flow into another text box in the next lesson, but for now I just have this text box that I can move around with the black arrow tool. It makes, lets me move the whole frame at once. I can also resize it, and you can see it does nothing to the text size. It just affects the wrap of the text since it will fill its container, kind of like a liquid. Okay. If I want to edit the text, I could just double click on it with the black arrow tool or go to the text tool itself. And as you know, you have to select to effect. So I want ingredients and directions to stand out more. So I'm going to select them and make them larger. I might make them bold. Okay. And I could do that same thing to direction, so I can select to effect, I can select to make it larger, make it bold. And I could do all my formatting in InDesign, which is what I would recommend. Okay, I would keep your Word document simple and just text, but then you can go in and once you bring it into InDesign, really start playing with it. Now, InDesign specializes in lots of text um, as far as being able to modify it. I just did very simple character corrections here, but if I select all my content by clicking and dragging or by going Command A while my cursor's in this frame, I can also change the letting, which some of you may remember from Illustrator. That changes the distance between lines. Okay, so I can make this a lot longer looking or a lot shorter. I just want to find a nice height that makes it nice and readable. Okay, and maybe it's different for this list than it is the paragraph below. So I might make this a little bit more spaced out. And I could add hard returns by just hitting return on my keyboard. Um, I can play with indentation. I'll actually come back to this example later on. But um, basic text insertion is reasonably easy. You just can either add it by hand or import it. 